four shots fired at the crime scene. And all four bullets perforated the toilet door into the toilet cubicle. The key players in this case became many celebrities in their own right. Uh, Chris Mangan is a very good example of that. Pagamile, you had the opportunity of speaking to him uh, about how he felt about his public profile. Chris is quite a fascinating character because um, he's actually painfully shy. And I, I misunderstood that. I thought he was a really serious, strict individual. But then I realized he's really, really shy. And I, 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 and, but he, he can't seem to get over his popularity ever since the trial. Ever since I testified in the case, I would say I took more than 300 photos with different people where everyone would want to take a picture with me. That some of them want me to come and visit them, and I don't want to do that. I just want my privacy. I don't want, I want my life back. It <laughs> looks like now they're taking my life. And, and do, 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 do you think part of the, the attention is also because he's got a cute element to him? <laughs> Everybody was talking about him. Everybody that. was he talking about cute. him. It it's testimony to who he is as a professional that in mm. fact his evidence was the, 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 the report that actually ch caused the state to pro uh, change its whole approach mm -hmm. about Oscar Pistorius being on his legs or on his stumps. Mm -hmm. And he said that when he got Oscar Pistorius' plea explanation, he actually took it and started testing those scenarios. And when it was scientifically apparent that this was, in fact, actual fact what had happened, that it, he'd been on his stumps and not on his legs, as, as the state had previously claimed in the bail application, that was the report that he put forward. He came across, not only was he thorough, but he came across as a man who had integrity. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that was was a really big coup for the state to get him as one of their star witnesses and work on the ballistics and do some of the crime scene management because they really needed him. He was thorough, he was detailed, um, and he has the respect of everybody. I mean, we're talking defense, we're talking prosecution. He really is the best at what he does in this country. Particularly looking at the state's case, there were so many moments. Karen, let's begin with you. The cricket bat, Oscar on his stumps, you know, the, the, uh, Oscar vomiting, there were so many. Which one stands out for you? The details of her last moments, the way in which those bullets had broken up inside her. Oscar Pistorius listening to that and retching. I mean, oh, I remember at one stage one of my friends position. texting me and saying, you look green because I was smelling the vomit. And all I wanted to do was vomit myself. And it was such a visceral, hideous reminder of that visceral, hideous morning mm. that I don't think I'll ever forget it. For, for people who may not have known why Kheri, the bulldog, now was ever given that name, it sort of came out through this trial. This was not a case which was a who done it. This was, we knew who did it. We mm. knew. We just needed to know why he'd done it and if he'd had the intent to do it. It was almost, in a way, a slam dunk for the state. They had his plea explanation. They'd been able to structure their evidence to deal with every aspect of that plea explanation. So there was a huge sense of com confidence coming from the state. Um, and, you know, I think very much throughout this case, the overwhelming narrative from particularly the media was very much that the state was in control. We didn't see those kind of questions about, was this a wise move to go on premeditated murder? Or are there other issues here? Overwhelmingly, there was a massive support of the state's stance in this case, and I think that's why the end of the trial was such a shock, a profound shock to people, because they genuinely did not see the state not getting a murder conviction in this case. But I think to an extent that Kheri now misread his judge. I think that she got, with this Guantanamo style at times, and I say that in inverted commas, um, with this Guantanamo style form of cross-examination, I think she got quite irritated, and I felt she felt, and it came out in the judgment, quite a lot of sympathy for Oscar Pistorius. All right, well, we're going to uh, watch some of the moments that you're speaking about after the break when we look at how the defense built its case and it produced some extremely dramatic moments in court. Stay with us.
We're looking back at the Oscar Pistorius murder trial that played out in 2014. The state believed Oscar Pistorius murdered Riva Steenkamp. The four bullets fired through the toilet door, they argued, was not the work of a man fearing for his life, but a man in rage. The defense ripped into the neighbors and ballistic experts who testified for the state, and then it was the defense's turn. The moment everyone was waiting for was for Pistorius to take the stand in his own defense. I'd like to apologize and say that there's not a moment and there hasn't been a moment um, since, since this tragedy happened that I haven't thought about uh, your family. Oscar Pistorius also says he's been living on a cocktail of antidepressants and sleeping pills since Stenkamp's death last year. On one occasion, his fear drove him to hide inside a cupboard. I'm scared to sleep. Uh, for, for, for several reasons, but uh, I, have, I have terrible nightmares, but about things that happen at night where I wake up and I smell, I can smell, um, I can smell uh, blood and I wake up to being terrified. A curveball during Pistorius's testimony was when the state introduced footage of Pistorius at a shooting range. The infamous zombie stopper video showed Pistorius shooting at a watermelon. That wasn't me laughing in the background, but that was my voice saying those words. What's your voice? I think in hindsight, my lady, it makes me very upset to hear myself say something like that. But to compare a zombie, which is a fictional animated character, to a human being is... The relevance is I, I, can, I can't put uh, two and two together. And if I was shooting at a watermelon, or at a piece of wood, or at a target. I didn't at any point compare it to a human or shooting at a human. No, you did. You did. You said. It's softer than brains. Who else got brains? My lady, uh, I was in that whole sentence. I was referring to a zombie. Um, yeah, but what we can see there is the effect the ammunition had on a waterman. It exploded. Am I right? That's correct, my lady. You know that the same happened to River's head. It exploded. Have a look. I'm going to show you, Mr. Pistorius, it had the exact same effect, the bullet that went into her head. My well, lady, I was there that night. I That's it. Oh. Have a look there, Mr. I know you don't want to because you don't want to take responsibility, but it's time that you look at it. Take responsibility for what you've done, Mr. Pistorius. My well, lady, I'll, I've taken responsibility by me waiting and not wanting to live my life, but waiting for my time on this stand to tell my story for the respect of Riva and for myself. I've taken responsibility, but I will not look at a picture where I'm tormented by what I saw and felt that night. As I picked Reva up, my fingers touched her head. I remember. I don't have to look at a picture. I was there. It's the same thing as the watermelon. You had it now in practice, mister. It's well, softer lady, than think, brains. I think that is extremely unfair to say that is the same thing as a watermelon. Uh, Karen, why did the state introduce this evidence? Why did they feel it was important? I think the overwhelming feeling was that Kerry Nell wanted to confront Oscar Pistorius with the lived or unfortunately in Reva Steenkamp's the dead consequences of his actions and I think there was something so I don't know moving violent terrible about seeing this this beautiful woman who'd been on magazine covers um, that last picture that was yeah. taken of her it's like out of a horror movie with really. all this blood in her hair yeah. and her face she was still so exquisite I mean she was an absolutely beautiful woman but dead you know I don't I, d I think that was one of the most profound moments of any trial that I've ever covered what was interesting as well was Kerry Nell had got it emerged subsequently that he'd got he'd spoken to her parents and said mm. you know I want to do this 
So they had had forewarning because I think that was one of the major That's questions. That's why they had yeah. their heads bowed. You know, to and they, June's head they've said, yes, down. do it, yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, June Steenkamp had spoken before, I think in a magazine article about going to identify her daughter's body and wanting to see the wounds. And I think in some way, maybe she wanted all of us to see the wounds. I think she wanted to remind us all what this trial was about. Maybe, I think that's what Kheri Nal, I think, uh, at, at that true. point was actually trying to do, was to say, you know, forget everything else. Forget you, Oscar Pistorius, and your career and your ambitions. There's a young woman whose future is now gone because of your actions. Mm -hmm. And now I'm demanding you to take responsibility. You know, a number of the advocates that I've spoken to have actually critiqued Kheri Nal's cross-examination and if you think about it he never got Oscar Pistorius to admit that he intended to kill the person behind that door and that's the major aspect of this now this pending appeal on the issue of Dolus Eventualis throughout all that sound and fury throughout all those visceral terrible images throughout the attacks on his character he never got him to say I intended to kill that person behind the door Another defense witness was Roger Dixon, who was called to give testimony on ballistics. You know, I'm going to be rude because but you don't you listen. The, the question was, Mr. is he an Nell. expert? Mr. Nell, yes, my lady. please restrain yourself. I will, my lady. May I then, through the court, just ask the witness to respond to the questions yes. and just the questions. Did you hear that, Mr. Dixon? Respond I heard to that, the question my lady. and just the questions, please. Now. Was this person an expert in recording explosive sounds and gunshots? Yes or no? That, that's what the answer is. Uh, my lady, that's the first time I've heard that specific question and it was stated to be the answer. Um, I have no idea on the expertise of the person who recorded the sound as to whether they are an expert in recording explosions and gunshots. Okay. No, I don't. Your analysis of visibility in the dark, did that require any expert skill? Um, my lady, the instruments I used there were my eyes. The equipment I used, my lady, was my eyes. Not a very high moment for the defense's case. That was honestly, I think, probably some of the most uh, entertaining, if I can put it that way, aspects of the trial. And if I can just sort of reflect a little bit of what was going on in the uh, overflow court, as I mentioned <laughs> that there was a running commentary going on throughout the trial, it got really bad when Roger Dixon hit the stand. He blagged it. He, he, he suddenly became an expert of far too many things and sound uh, light lights. yeah and it just didn't work and out for poor roger he'd never testified before mm. and you could see he had that attitude of a university lecturer i'm going to tell everyone what's going on and no one's going to question me and that's exactly that you could see he was used to a whole lot of first years just going mm -hmm. I, he didn't I think but, count on but, but looking at that moment it was quite surprising especially given that going into the case there was so much emphasis put on these amazing witnesses yeah. that the defense uh, had gathered and the America. amount of money yes. spent exactly yeah. by Oscar in you know just putting up this very strong uh, case that was going to be for the defense I but at that stage they thought they were facing a case that he'd been on his legs so they put a huge amount of their resources legally speaking towards disproving that the expertise of their ballistics expert in fairness to them the case that they initially thought they were facing at the bail app application versus the case that they subsequently faced was very, very different. That being said, however, Roger Dixon, I mean, I, I don't to this day even know how to express exactly how bad he was.